Did you know that the average interest rate on a savings account in the United States is at 0.13%? Hi everyone, Brian here. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over the top banks that will offer you a minimum of 15 times better interest rates than the national average. Inflation has been well over 8% all year long and your hard earned cash is losing its purchasing power over time. But with the economy looming over the edge of a recession, we should all have a minimum emergency fund to cover at least three to six months worth of living expenses. Having a high yield bank account is an ideal ideal spot to have access to quick cash if you need it. Granted, if you have an excess of funds that you want a safe investment outside of the stock market, I also recommend looking at I-bonds, which were at greater than 9% earlier this year. Treasury bills are around 3 to 4%, and CD rates are around 3.5%. And all of those investments will tie up your capital anywhere from one month to one year if you choose. But you can liquidate them earlier than the maturity date, but it will come with some penalties. I cover how to invest in those types of securities in some of my other videos, and I'll have a link in the description below. As for high yield bank accounts, I am only looking at banks that offer the highest rates available. And each bank has their own set of requirements to hit those types of rates. Some have no requirements and others have several hoops that you need to jump through. Each person will have their own appetite for what they're willing to do for those rates. So I'm providing you with several options that should meet the needs for someone with only a few thousand in their bank account, all the way up to someone that has tens of thousands in their account. I also have a spreadsheet available in the link below where I update the rates across 17 banks so you can always be up to date. You can input your estimated bank account balances in the savings and checking, and it's going to tell you what your interest would be at the end of the year at that rate. I do have a few disclaimers. One, always check the banks to verify their requirements and their rates. They can change any detail at any time they choose. Next, most of the banks I'm reviewing are online only. I understand that some people will only bank where there's a physical branch. If that's the case, I highly recommend that you look at your local credit union since they tend to pass along the best rates. And lastly, I am not paid or incentivized by any of the banks that I'm reviewing. This is just an honest review. I begin by prioritizing banks that have little or no fees for their accounts. Most online banks have a no fee structure, while the huge conglomerate banks tend to nickel and dime customers on everything. Second, I am only showcasing banks that are FDIC insured and also have fraud protection on your debit card. Lastly, they must all have free bill pay and access to a lot of ATMs. I am also trying to show you banks that may have unique offerings that make them stand out from one another. I am showing these banks in no particular order because everyone has different needs for their bank and what may be great for one person may be really bad for another. And please keep in mind that the rates of these banks will constantly be changing, but you can see the latest rates in my spreadsheet in the link below. The first bank that I am reviewing today is T-Mobile Money. This may seem like it's coming out of left field, but T-Mobile Money offers 4% APY on their savings account up to $3,000. And then it offers 2.25% on everything above that. Plus, their checking account also offers 2.25% on their entire balance. However, the 4% rate is only good for those that have a cell phone plan with T-Mobile. For everyone else that doesn't have a plan with T-Mobile, then you still get the 2.25% APY. The one requirement that T-Mobile customers need to hit in order to get that 4% APY is that you need to use your debit card 10 times a month and transferring money to a friend counts towards your 10 transactions. If you don't meet that requirement, then you still get the 2.25%, which is still better than the majority of all the other banks out there. One added bonus with this account is that they allow you to get paid two days early if you have direct deposit, and they also cover $50 in overdraft protection. These have become standard offerings across the banks, so I won't be referencing it in the future banks. For many people out there, an issue they are trying to navigate around is how to deposit cash for an online bank. But T-Mobile does offer this feature at their ATM network of over 65,000 locations. These are all part of their all point network where they are located in retail store locations. Look, I get it. T-Mobile isn't who comes to mind for a high yield bank account, but their rates are incredible for those who are and are not T-Mobile customers. Overall, the T-Mobile money accounts are great for T-Mobile customers with either a low or high balances in their account that are willing to go through the hoops of 10 debit card transactions a month or transfer money to their friends 10 times in a month. The next online bank is Lending Club, which offers 2.85% on savings, but only 0.1% on checking. For the savings account, Lending Club doesn't have any requirements. It is very straightforward with what you see is what you get. However, with the checking, there's some upside and downside to discuss. First, the rates in the checking account are horrible at 0.1% and you need to have at least $2,500 to get that rate. It then bumps up to 0.15% if you have over $100,000, but I'm not sure why you do that. 
that. The upside with their checking account is that they use the MoneyPass ATM network, where you can also deposit cash and Lending Club will pay any and all ATM fees if you go outside of their network. That is a very nice perk if you use random ATMs on a frequent basis. Lending Club also provides 1% cash back on all debit card purchases. Me personally, I use my credit card for almost all of my purchases where I get far more than 1% back. But if I am forced to use my debit card, it sure would be nice to get that 1% back. Overall, Lending Club is great for those that have high balances in their savings account, but not so much in their checking. The savings account is also hassle-free with no major requirements. The third bank today is Capital One 360 Checking and Savings, where the savings rate is at 2.2% and the checking is at a low 0.1%. Capital One is different from other online banks because they do offer a handful of physical branches along with their Capital One cafes. When I used to live in Seattle, I would go to the Capital One cafes almost every single day because their drinks are 50% off for Capital One cardholders. And they also offer free donuts on a regular basis. Like I really needed that. When it comes to ATMs, they are part of the Money Pass and All Point network with over 70,000 retail ATMs. Overall, Capital One 360 accounts have no additional requirements. They offer a few physical locations and they have solid technology in their platforms. And the fourth bank that I'm discussing is Quantic Bank that offers 2.15% in savings and 1.1% APY in checking. Quantic has a requirement that you are limited to only six withdrawals from savings per month, and there's a $10 fee for each withdrawal after that. If you don't make frequent withdrawals from your savings account, then you really have nothing to worry about, but I did want to point it out. In reference to the checking account, you need to have at least 10 debit card transactions per month at $10 or more to get the 1.1% APY. But Quantic is offering something a bit different from other banks, and that is a free pay ring. Instead of using your credit card or your phone, you can simply use this ring. Now, would this ring be enough to convince me to have all of my accounts at Quantic? No, but it is unique and different layered on top of the great rates that Quantic is offering. Granted, the downside is that Quantic has the most requirements of any of the banks that I'm reviewing today. Moving on to the fifth bank of SoFi, which offers a solid 2.5% on savings and 2.5% on checking. The only major requirement is that you must have direct deposit, but there is no minimum requirement on what that direct deposit may be. SoFi also offers up to a $300 bonus for new account holders, and the bonus amount varies based on how much you have set up in your direct deposit. SoFi offers an entire ecosystem of investment options for its customers. You can set up an investment account for ETF, stock, or even cryptocurrency. Plus, they offer fractional shares of stock starting at $5 with no commissions, which is better than some of the large exchanges. It also has the option of a robo-advisor that can do some of the investment activities automatically for you. With regards to a one-stop shop, you can also get your loans and insurance straight from SoFi. And one feature that I appreciate is their credit monitoring service that provides insights to your score and also advice if you need it. Hey, it's free to use and new customers get $10 when you sign up for the feature. In addition to all that, they also have members-only experiences and events. And if you live in the LA area, then you get some of the added benefits at their stadium, like expedited entry and a members-only lounge. I am a big fan of SoFi and what they offer for services. This is a great option for those that have larger balances in both your checking and your savings accounts, or for those that like to have a one-stop shop for all of your investments with no major hurdles to overcome. And before I get into the last couple of banks, I do want to showcase the fact that I have a spreadsheet in the link below where I update the bank rates every couple of weeks. This way, if the Fed increases the rates resulting in banks offering higher rates, then it will be up to date in the spreadsheet, even if my video is not. I'll give you a quick example. In the top, you can enter the account balances for yourself, and it will list out what the interest would be at the end of the year per bank. With $5,000 in savings and checking, you can see that the bank's offering the best in return is SoFi, which is tied with Vero at each offering $250. But the best interest is seen from T-Mobile Money at $277. Now let's change this to $30,000 in savings. SoFi now offers the best in return at $875. Like I said, this tool is updated regularly, and you can check it out at any time in the link below for the best option for you and your needs. Now on to the sixth bank, which is Ally Bank with a savings rate of 2.25% and a checking rate of 0.25%. There are a ton of people that are incredibly loyal to Ally because they offer a slew of services that make them a one-stop shop for finances, just like SoFi. For example, you can set up an investment account and start investing in crypto, stocks, and ETF where most transactions are commission-free. With regards to the savings account, I like that they have different buckets where you can set up independent goals for things like vacations, emergency funds, or possibly holiday spending. 
Just another automated way to create goals and keep you on track for saving. Currently, they have a promotion where you can get 1% of your account set up up to $500 worth if you keep the funds in your account until February 15th, 2023. Once again, they are a no-hassle bank option where everyone gets 2.25% in savings. They don't even require direct deposit. As I mentioned in the beginning, I was going to list out all the banks in no particular order because each person has different aspects that they are looking for in their bank. This concludes my video on top online high yield bank accounts. I hope you were able to get some value out of the video and be smart with your money.